an English breakfast made from wool. Things are not always what they seem at the British Museum of Food. It was founded by Sam Bumpus and Harry Parr, both from Britain. This video installation is part of the exhibition and was taken with a pill-sized camera normally used by doctors. It shows how food travels through our bodies. The duo Bumpus and Parr is known for their unusual food projects. So, of course, their museum had to be something special too. I think the, the idea of like classical museums, which are sort of like ossuaries or sort of like temples to precious objects, is becoming more and more antiquated. So here at the museum, you don't just come to look at things, you don't just even come to look at other people looking at things as well, which is what museums are normally good at. You come to interact with one another. That prospect is especially inviting at the installation, the butterfly effect. It boasts tropical temperatures, artificial sunlight, and 400 butterflies flitting about the room. But what are butterflies doing in a food museum? It's simple. They play a vital role in the pollination of fruits like bananas, a staple food for many people around the globe. Chocoholics should head for Chocophonica, where visitors take part in a survey. While eating chocolate, they're exposed to various sounds. Afterwards, they rate their taste experience. The results will be analyzed at Oxford University, which is studying how noise affects our sense of taste. Visitors like the museum's concept. I thought it was great. It's not quite what we expected, um, but certainly very enjoyable experience. I've never been to a museum that's so interactive. It is very different to other museums I've been to. Uh, I work in a museum in Ireland and uh, uh, it's a much more conventional museum so it's very nice to see uh, something pushing the boundaries of, of museum work. My philosophy is if you give people a really engaging time, um, most people are very inquisitive and they'll start asking questions. Um, of course we then make um, the message available for people. Sam Bombas and his partner Harry Parr have been getting their message out creatively for years. In 2007, they became known as the Jellymongers for creating architecture out of jelly. Ever since, the duo has delved into new culinary terrain. They've barbecued over molten lava and sent coffee beans 37 kilometers into orbit on a helium balloon. Back on Earth, the beans became space coffee. In 2015, Bumpus and Parr served up a 200-course menu in London. The meal lasted 24 hours. When we're working with food, we've always tried to look at the things that get people really excited. There are normally very few foods which, which universally put a smile on people's faces. They tend to be things like coffee, chocolate, alcohol, and meat. And those are the things that, when they come to the table, everyone's faces light up. Next to the museum, they've opened Alcoholic Architecture, a walk-in cloud bar that dispenses breathable cocktails. Visitors wander through the alcoholic cloud wearing plastic ponchos, so that at least their clothes stay dry. Here, you can get tipsy just from breathing, though regular drinks are on offer too. The Bar Alcoholic Architecture gives you a drinking experience you've never had before. You have the ultimate bragging rights next time you go out to any other bar with your friends and a better story to tell. The Food Museum is slated to remain open for three months, but Bumpus and Parr are looking for investors willing to give it a permanent home. Then the British Museum of Food would really become the institution it ought to be.